Hi, I'm Meg Mason and I'm the author of Sorrow and Bliss. It's the story of Martha, who we meet when she's 40, about to separate from her husband Patrick, who is the love of her life, and likewise she's the love of his life. They've known each other and been in love since they were teenagers, and at the heart of the story is an undiagnosed mental illness that Martha's been suffering with for that entire time. And the question at the heart of the novel is what is Martha and what is her illness? And when she finds out, when she finally gets that diagnosis that she's been seeking, her question becomes, is it too late to regain everything that's been lost. It sounds bleak, I've been told, but I've also been told, thank goodness, that it's funny. And um, that's what I was aiming for, so I hope that you enjoy it. I'm here at Waterstones Piccadilly, which is incredibly exciting. And if you were here with me, I would be pressing these books into your hands. The first one is The Pursuit of Love by Nancy Mitford. I was not a reader when I was a teenager or a child, which is maybe unusual considering my um, subsequent career, but this was one of the first books that I came to as a late teenager and it turned me on to reading and I suddenly realised what everybody had been talking about. Um, I just don't know how, I mean I'm so envious if you haven't read it, it is, it is her classic, it is so funny and so dark and so sad and so brilliant and I think she is such a sort of icon for female writers who want to do pathos and humour in the same book, the same paragraph in the same sentence and she is, I mean it's a classic, she's a genius. I love her and I think you'll love her as well. When I set out to write fiction, I was convinced that to be taken seriously as a writer, you had to write serious fiction. And so my first sort of manuscript that I produced, my main effort in it was to make sure no jokes got into it. And unsurprisingly, it was dreary and awful and very dark, and it has, thank goodness, never seen the light of day. Um, and the epiphany for me, and what sort of turned me around and helped me embrace the kind of writer that I am, was taking on holiday a book by Nina Stivy that's called Man at the Helm. I took that novel and a serious literary fiction novel and I didn't read that and I read the Stibby twice in a week. She is so clever and so deft and artful and just hilarious and it's the kind of book that I want to read and I wish I could write. She has a new one out which I mean is just we're so lucky and this one is the funniest of all of them. The, the ratio of sort of jokes and there's four jokes in every line. It's so dense and my friends and I always screenshot pages of books, you know, mark them up and send them to each other. And I started doing it with this one and then I just realized I was photographing the entire book. So um, it's so good. Please read it. I just started reading Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, which I'm ashamed to admit I hadn't read until now. And when I was reading it, it was reminding me of something that I'd read recently with that it had that incredible suspense and that closed kind of claustrophobic world and sense of menace. And I couldn't remember what it was until I saw it on my shelf and it's this, Magpie by Elizabeth Day. This has just come out in paperback and it is, it has all of that sort of gothic -y. It's set in contemporary times. It's, it's about a couple who are um, attempting to become parents, but it has that brooding and that foreboding and menace. It is so good and I don't generally read books in a sitting but this one I think I was sort of stationary for seven hours while I got through it. It is um it's definitely a future classic and if you like Du Maurier then you're in for a treat. Mm -hmm.